Good morning and welcome to the services of Inglewood First United Methodist Church. We welcome you in Jesus' name and with Jesus' joy. This is Epiphany Sunday and we gather on this morning to celebrate the light that led the wise men to the baby Jesus. The light that will guide us as we move through this last Sunday of 2022 and into the year 2023. Welcome to Inglewood First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lisa Smith and our lead pastor, Reverend Victor Cyrus Franklin, will be bringing our message today entitled Another Way as we celebrate the sermon series theme this month, A More Excellent Way. We welcome you in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ. Won't you pray with me? God of promise and light, open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promises of justice and righteousness, promises fulfilled in the babe of Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey quest to find the one who will truly set us free. May this time of worship bring us closer to you that the good news of the birth of light and love may transform our lives. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world, we pray. Amen. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship is to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God, sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every 
Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for the blessing. Thank you, Pastor Lisa, uh, for welcoming us. And again, the music throughout the worship is music of celebration from throughout the year. Uh, we've come this far by faith. We've come through 2022 into 2023, and here we are on January 1st. Uh, so we praise God for all of our leaders in the congregation and in the community and all of our leaders musically and with technology and everything uh, so that we can come together. So again, we praise God for the music. Uh, so for today's service, again, we, we, we understand it's still a holiday, so we don't want to go too long again. <laughs> uh, but we have our scripture for today uh, on this Epiphany Sunday uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Yeah, from the Common English Bible, it reads this way. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, falling to their knees. They honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of being able to gather, even in this online space, as we enter into this new year, and pray that you will set us forth uh, in a more excellent way, a way of love, a way of hope, a way of truth, a way of peace, a way of joy, that we may follow your will and your way this day and throughout the year, we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. So also, again, this is first Sunday, so that means we're having communion. So if you haven't gotten your elements yet, if you haven't gotten your bread, if you haven't gotten your juice, you haven't gotten what you needed, go ahead and find them while the message is going on. You can still listen while you're going and getting what you need so that we could come to Christ's table together. I think we can start the new year uh, around the table. So again, our topic, our theme for today is another way. And as Pastor Lisa shared, our theme for the month is a more excellent way. But today, just for reflection, meditation, another way. So uh, here we are, January 1st. It's the new year, a new year that God has given us. And for many of us, we still observe the tradition of New Year's resolutions. I personally don't observe New Year's resolutions. A lot of folks have given up on them because we failed time and time again <laughs> over the years. But some of us are still holding on to faith, and we have these New Year's resolutions. Uh, we have them because we're grateful for the past year. We're grateful for the last year. Uh, we have them because some of, with, of what we've gone through over the course of the year, we don't know how we made it. We don't know how we're still here, and we've come this far by faith. Uh, some of us, many of us, we've learned some things along the way. And because of what we saw and where we ended up at the end of the year, we said, I need to start the new year off right. So I'm going to try something new. I'm going to start a new habit. I'm going to start a new practice. I'm going to try something that I haven't tried 
before, and so we set up a New Year's resolution for ourselves. We make resolutions for what we will do differently. We make resolutions for what we're going to do better. <laughs> we make resolutions for what we'll do more intentionally for our lives. We've made plans with the best of intentions, and then every year we have to reinvestigate our plans. So in the midst of that, I saw one post on social media. They said, well, everyone's making New Year's resolutions this year, and so many are making resolutions around their health. So they decided they were going to set up a business plan, and they were going to start a gym. And they said in their gym, they would just rent exercise equipment for two weeks and then set up a wine bar for the rest of the weeks throughout the year. <laughs> They said if they're not going to do that, they'll, they're for folks who want to turn vegan. They said they're going to have vegan options for just two weeks and then have barbecue for the rest of the year, right? They said they're going to set up some type of exercise program where they'll set it up for people to walk in groups. We'll do a walk-in park every day for the first two weeks and then just set it up for folks to sit on the couch for the week, <laughs> every week after that for the rest of the year. We make plans. God knows we make plans with the best of intentions, and then those plans change. But I'd like to submit, there's nothing necessarily wrong with the change of plans. There's nothing necessarily wrong with our plans changing based on what we are dealing with and based on what we're faced with and based on what we're going through. There's nothing wrong when, when, chance plan, when, change, when plans change because circumstances of our lives change. The situations of our lives change. The conditions of our lives change. We have the best of intentions, but then when conditions begin to change around us, our plans accommodate and have to change too. So I'd like to submit for anyone, if you've made a resolution before and you're worried if your plans are going to change and you're not going to follow through with it, don't beat up on yourself. Don't tear yourself down. Don't wonder what, what was wrong with you that you couldn't maintain after the circumstances changed because sometimes we need a change of plan. Sometimes we need our plans to change because staying the course could lead to our destruction. Sometimes we need for our plans to change because keeping the course the way it is could lead to our harm. But by going another way, it can lead to our health. It can lead to our hope. It can lead to our salvation. Such is the case in our scripture for today. Uh, again, it's Epiphany Sunday. Technically on the calendar, Epiphany is on January the 6th. And just a little bit of background on Epiphany. In some parts of the world, Christmas Day is really celebrated on January the 6th uh, to remember that the Magi came after the birth of Jesus days later. And that's remembered on January the 6th. And so in many parts of the world, especially in the Eastern Church, that's when gifts are actually given out. It's on January the 6th, not January the 20th, not December the 25th. So I know some folks said, don't you try to change my plans because I'm opening up my presents every year <laughs> on December the 25th. Don't change my plans to try to say we need to open on January the 6th. But, but in, the, in the history of the church and in the world, there are many folks throughout the world in the church who celebrate Epiphany Sunday and Christmas Sunday on January the 6th. And that's when they give gifts because that's when the Magi brought the gifts to Jesus. So here we are uh, on this celebration. Oh, and I, I need, let me say this too. I remember that because when Reverend Nima and I were still in seminary, she organized a New Testament club, a Bible club, and we had a trip where we followed the footsteps of Paul and we flew to Greece and I, after Christmas Day and we flew to Greece. And I remember when January 6th came, I thought I was going to go out and see some things. Everything in Athens shut down. Everything in uh, Thessaloniki shut That's where Thessalonians, that's those people there. Everything shut down because they were celebrating Christmas. And that's when I discovered that folks in other parts of the world celebrate Christmas, <laughs> the birth of Jesus on a different day than we do here. But either way, whenever we celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus, the Magi, the Magi uh, were understood, perceived to be magicians. Uh, some, of us, some folk thought they were astrologists. We call them wise. And they were wise people who came from a foreign land. They were not Jewish people. 
They were people outside of the Jewish community. They didn't grow up hearing the stories of the prophecy. They didn't grow up reading the scriptures prophesying the coming of a Messiah, but they were people who were outsiders who were wise and they saw the sign. They saw the signs that a great light was coming into the world. They saw the signs that a savior was coming to the world. They didn't necessarily need those scriptures, but they took what they had and they knew God was up to something special. So they saw the signs. They could interpret the signs. They could recognize the signs. And we know the story. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And there were three things that they brought. It doesn't mean that there were three men. I would, I would say it may not even been three people. It could have been some women in the group. We don't know. It doesn't say. It just says that they were magi. But they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They brought gold representing royalty because they knew royalty was in their midst. They brought frankincense representing divinity because they knew divinity was in their midst. They brought myrrh representing burial, which is the end of a new life, end of an old life, and the start of a new life. You got to grieve if we're going to be open to new possibilities. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh because they knew that this child that was born would be the deliverer of all nations and of all people. They knew that this child would help make all people all over the world be blessed, not just one people in one place. The scripture says they come and they give homage to God because the Christ has been born. They come and they worship. The scripture says they come and they came and they brought their gifts to God. They brought their gifts for worship. But I'd like to submit the most important gift that came. And the most important gift that comes from this passage is not the gift that the Magi brought to Jesus with Mary and Joseph present. But the most important gift was the gift that God gives them. And in that gift, God gives them another way. And that gift, God gives them a new opportunity. What do you mean by that, preacher? I I'm, I'm, promise, I'm going to be over real quick. See, the Magi had planned to just follow the star. The Magi had planned just to follow the guidance of a trusted authority in the land. They went to the top. They went to King Herod, who was the king of the Jews at the time. And they said, we're just going to follow our plan and follow the trusted authority. They said they had a plan to find the child this child of promise, of hope, of freedom, and of deliverance. They had a plan to pay homage to that child and to bring and to give their gifts. And then they had a plan to return to Herod because Herod had asked them, once you've seen the child, come and tell me what you've seen so that I can rejoice with you. Their plan was to return to Herod. But God comes to them in a dream and says, Magi, there's a change of plan. <laughs> I know you've set your course. I know you've set your way. And you are wise enough to know to come here to this place. But God comes to them in the dream and gives them a change of plans. And the scripture says they left for their own country by another road. They went another way. They go another way because in order to protect this child, they had to go another way. They had to go another way so they could protect themselves because God knows Herod may have wanted to take them out too. They had to go another way. They had to go another way because in order for the world to be blessed, they needed to make sure this child was protected. They had to go another way way they had laid out their plans for what their journey would be in the midst of it god changed their plans i'd like to submit sometimes god gives us another way to protect us from hurt harm and danger i'd like to submit sometimes god gives us another way to protect us for the journey ahead so that we can make it to the destination. I'd like to submit God gives us another way 
to provide for us a path so that not only we can survive, but so that we can thrive. If we have to stay the course for the plans that we set up, we may miss out on the protection and the provision that God wants to give us. Like these wise magi, we got to be open to another way. So this year, as we look at the year 2023, this year there's a road to health that may not come the way that we planned. This year there is a road to employment that may not come the way that we planned. This year there may be a road to healing of the wounds that we have that may not come the way that we intended. This year there may be a road to deliverance that doesn't come the way we thought that it would come. This year there can be a road to opportunity that may not come the way that we anticipated and the way we planned for it to come. This year there is a road to salvation that we may not have planned for, that we may not have anticipated, that we may not have expected, but God wants to come to us and show us another way. So my sisters, my brothers, my siblings, and my friends in the midst of this new year and every resolution that we make, be open because God may be showing you another way. In the midst of every resolution that we make, the conditions and the situations may change. Don't give up. God may be opening up a door and a window and an opportunity to another way. A way that, in fact, could be a more excellent way. (laughs) A way like the Magi who found another way home. God bless your family. Happy New Year. Amen, amen, and amen.
Christ has set the table before us. Uh, the table is prepared. And so what better way to start the new year than to start the year with the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, this sacrament that reminds us of God's presence in our lives, of what Jesus has done for us, and what difference it makes. Jesus' sacrifice and Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And so you only have about 30 more seconds if you can. If you need to get your bread, if you need to get your juice, please do so. And we'll gather around Christ's table uh, and start this new year with the sacrament of Holy Communion. Thank you for joining us today and being with us. And let us continue on our worship uh, with today's sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to prisoners, and recovering of sight to the blind, to free the oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered on this New Year's Day. And on these gifts of bread and wine, wherever we may be, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our, Our God, God in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 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 Take the bread you have before you. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat, and as often as you do so, do so in remembrance of me. And Jesus said also, this is my blood, shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Take and drink. Go ahead, drink, and as often as you do so, 
do so in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the sacrament, and we thank you for it is the sign of your presence in our lives. Where there's something inside so strong that whatever we face in this life, whatever challenge, whatever trauma we may encounter, there is a spirit within us that connects us to you, that gives us resilience, that gives us resurrection, uh, that gives us a restored hope. So lead us this year uh, that with every resolution, we may be knocked down, but we are not knocked out. Uh, We may have come up short and we may need to change plans, but you'll continue to lead us and guide us in the roots and the paths of our salvation, our hope, and your love. This we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Pastor Victor has opened the way for us to be guided by the light to the different ways that God will be directing us throughout this new year. We're so glad that you've joined us for this worship celebration today as we close out this new year. We ask God's blessings upon you for miracles and light throughout 2023. Uh, We say a final happy birthday to all of our December birthday babies and ask God's blessings upon each and every one of you. We thank all of you for your support of the ministry here throughout the year, your financial support. We continue to uh, receive gifts and support despite the fact that we've been operating so much in this virtual world and, and in person and out of person. And so we just thank you for your continued and consistent support. Uh, You may give online, uh, you may give in person during our worship time. And we just, once again, thank you for your continued financial support of the ministry here uh, as we continue with our housing project and our work with LA Voice. uh, We're just uh, blessed Um, that we can continue to be a blessing through your continued tithes and offering. God bless each of you, and Happy New Year as we close out this year. From First Inglewood United Methodist Church, uh, we again say Happy New Year, and God bless you and light your way as you go today. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Lisa. Give it up for Pastor Lisa. (laughs) Amen. We thank you, Pastor Lisa. And again, as she has shared, thanks everyone for your generosity uh, throughout the year and in the year to come. Uh, God is still doing great things in this place. And check this out, Inglewood, just like the scripture. Go back and read the scripture when you have a moment. Because the Magi come and they say, People don't think anything good's coming out of this Bethlehem, but the Lord, the Savior, will be born here. And so as we look to the year ahead, we stay on track and we're going to get everybody on board. We all have a job to do to get through this year. But the goal is for us to stay on track throughout this year, 2023, so that by Christmas of next year, we will have closed on this ground lease on this affordable housing development. We'll have a big old block party out in front of the church to get the whole neighborhood out. And then in January, we will break ground. Uh, On Christmas Eve, some of us remember, we sang Plenty Good Room. All right, Brother Woody is here. We sang Plenty Good Room. We're making room for Jesus by making room for God's people with affordable housing here in Inglewood. Uh, We're making room for Jesus, saying there is room in the end uh, because of the great work we'll be doing in ministry with the neighborhood and the community. Uh, connected to that. So God has great plans for us. Uh, Christ is surely born and God is showing us a more excellent way. All right. So we're going to look forward to that this year. I also want to lift up just two more things. One, um, on the 15th, on Martin Luther King Sunday, we're going to have a guest speaker. We just confirmed Dr. Miguela Bethune, uh, who teaches at Loyola Marymount University, and she's overseeing the racial equity audit for the California Pacific Conference of the United Methodist Church. 
and she's hosted listening sessions uh, with uh, constituencies throughout the conference. And so she'll be our Martin Luther King weekend human relations Sunday speaker. And then that afternoon at 1230, uh, we're going to have a young adult listening session for her. And uh, we're hoping it's going to be a grace. We're going to confirm, but it should be a grace. And that afternoon, we'll have a brunch. But just keep that on your radar. So look for Dr. Michaela Bethune. And so we need to give her a great Inglewood welcome when she comes on the 15th. So we'll be here back in the live in the sanctuary at 830 in the morning. Uh, the last thing I just want to offer just by way of announcement and appreciation is um, so I finished this first semester of this doctoral program and I got all A's. Let the church say amen. All right. I got all A's. <laughs> all right. And uh, and at the urging of my mother in love or who wants to say that we want to continue to donate to support you to help pay for your tuition and your books and your expenses. So now in the online giving, there's a space to support Pastor Victor's continuing education. OK. And so if you want to support in that invest in that endeavor, um, there's a space for you to do that and get credit for it for your taxes right? <laughs> and, and your giving. So you're not giving to me directly, but it will come through the church. And so, again, I just want to thank everyone who's starting back in June with the whole ordination and gave and support and birthday and Christmas. And it just it means a lot for me and it means a lot for us. And um, many of you here in this congregation are aware of the many dangerous toils and snares that we come through. And so um, just personally being able uh, to get this degree is a personal a goal. And my research is really connected to the work that we're doing right now. Um, so all of you are going to be interviewed by me over the course of the next year uh, as we work through this process in this program of leadership for social transformation. And so the goal is to have a book that can come out of this so we can tell the story of this congregation and how God has brought this congregation through creating another way to do ministry for the 21st century. So anyway, so I just want to say again, thank you all really for your support. and. Um, and I look forward to marching on until victory is won in Jesus' name. So, all right. Uh, so in that spirit, and as we go forth, receive these words of benediction. Send us forth from this place, O oh God, like the Magi. As we've come into this hour of worship, expecting and anticipating and planning for one path, lead us from this place, listening to your voice, telling us where to go. Lead us where we will be protected. Lead us where we will be preserved. Lead us in the path where we will survive. Lead us in the paths where we can thrive so that we can bear witness, pay homage to you, and bring the gifts that we have as a community that we can help this community be what you have created and called it to be. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Send us forth this year in a more excellent way. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Happy New Year. Go in peace, family. Amen. Oh,
are some folks who look and long for this world riches. There are some folks who look for power, position too. But I have a Christ all in my life that makes me happy. Christ is all, all in all, this world to be. Yes, Christ is all. He's everything to me. Yes, Christ is all. He rules the land and sea. Yes, Christ is all. Yes, Christ is all, all and all, this world to me. Yes, Christ is all, He's everything to me. Yes, Christ is all, He rules the land and sea. Yes, Christ is all. Yes, Christ is all, all and all, this world to be.